a bit of change with our recording time so <laughs> I'm a little bit disorganized as always but nonetheless nonetheless it's by weekly cast it's by weekly cast number 35 the hosts are still here and the hosts are you I'm Slava Rudnitsky and you are and I'm Dima Malenko and today we are going to work to work no we are not going to work we are Please going no. to talk <laughs> we are going to talk about or I called or referred to as working asynchronously, and we will, down the line, we will see if it makes a lot of sense. And since this is your episode, or your inspired by you episode, we should have a follow-up, but there is no follow-up. So we could right. jump straight to the theme corner first, before we get right. to the actual topic. Yeah, sure. Let, let, let's, let's do that. As you remember... The the topic not wait, wait, did you say topic? It's a theme. It's not not the a topic. Yeah, I, I think I I also made made this mistake maybe a couple of times, but um, yeah. So the theme for this year for me is this next year of next. So it's not the next year. This that's the year of next. It's this year is which is the year of next, and I think it's I'm 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 starting with it and. I felt as as I started going, I felt like hmm, it it would be useful. There is there is something I can can accomplish by focusing on some specific elements in in a season or in a month. And I decided to follow your suit and also have kind of seasonally and monthly monthly themes. And for now, I'm uh, in in a winter of headroom. And the idea there is that in order for something next or something new to come in, something old has has to go. And one of the things that I felt like holding me back at least a little bit was that I I was always and still am to an extent always loaded with stuff. My head is full of stuff, and it, mm-hmm. when it's full of stuff, it's difficult to let something new in or let something new in more or less seriously. And this is one of the things I'm trying to focus on for for the winter to see how I can give myself more headroom. That makes a lot of sense. And have you thought of activities that should potentially give you this headspace? There are two things, one which is kind of failing and, and one which is going going okay. And the one which is going okay is related to, to the monthly theme, which I decided that, all right, uh, there is a couple of things that I do that are sort of procedural, where I oversee processes that just go. There is an element in cre- of creativity in them, but that's not as much and more energy and time goes into just making a thing move move forward and it would benefit from processes that are being more refined more documented so that more people can get involved and i decided to focus in january specifically on all sorts of process improvements around what 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 i'm doing and i specifically said <laughs> no to some other activities or some other projects or tasks I could have done to focus on things related to processes. And I think it's, it's going fine. It, it does it does help me to create that additional headroom by automating or improving some of the stuff. One other thing that didn't go as well was I thought, all right, this is, um, this is going to be a winter of headroom. And there is an app by um similarly sounding name called Headspace. Like what if what if and, I and the yeah. What what if I try to to use it and kind of to to slow down a little bit, to calm myself down, to create that headspace and through that uh create the headroom. I think in this month I I used it I used it exactly once. <laughs> And uh, yeah, th- th- there is something to, to think about. Um, it's kind of it, it turned out to be 
very difficult to weave it into my daily sort of schedule. But I guess mm. that's that's not the schedule's problem. That's my problem. It's my schedule. So I can do something about it. It's just I didn't manage or didn't get to do anything about that. But I thought it was funny. Curious. And how uh, I, I believe in Headspace, you can pick the length of the meditation and that you're taking like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or more. Uh, which one have you tried? N not, none of that. And, and that may be a problem with, with the app as well, because when I just signed up, this was my first time with this with this app, and it allows you some kind of guidance or guidance courses or something along those lines. And I decided, and and the interface is not very much, very clear at all. Mm -hmm. There are so many kind of different options, and I decided, all right, let, let's see how you can guide me towards the light, and I started one of those kind of guidance things and I did it exactly exactly once and, and it was they, they invite users to start light so it was like three to five minutes something like shorter mm -hmm. thing and I still still don't understand the, the app given that I maybe opened it like three four times only I guess I was meditating with Headspace for a year and a half but it was before this new design and it looked very different. When I tried for the second time, I didn't really figure out. Plus, they've changed the subscription model. Now it's yearly only, I guess. Mm -hmm. And previously, it was a monthly subscription as well. But, so it was interesting, interesting experience. I'll, I'll give it another, another try. Well, there are always alternatives like Calm or just guided meditations on YouTube. That, that could work as well. Thank you. Can you... Can you trust people on, on YouTube with something like this? Something as intimate as meditation? Do you, do you want to get people from YouTube into your head? Mm, I would say that uh, I mostly use it for just the music and the sounds, not the actual guidance. If I would like to spend some time, I would just take the headphones and turn on something for... 10 minutes so i would know it's 10 minutes and then just focus it on my mind on where my thoughts flow and my body and that kind of works it's not mm -hmm. super guided it's not super structured but it works for me it ma makes sense i'll i'll give it another try i hope i can find time for that and i, I i'll report back how it goes so that that would be it about your theme or anything else? No, I think one one other interesting thing is about journaling. I got back into it and I do it more or less regularly. Definitely more regularly than one once a week. It's almost mm -hmm. almost daily. Sometimes I kind of uh, miss it, but that, that's all right. And I, I thought in the previous episode I already shared that I'm using this wallet journal and that's kind of going one one interesting thing about this is that by and large this journal is not mm, as rigid as the themed journal because there mm -hmm. is nothing you, you just start with empty page and i found that surprisingly liberating in a sense i had sex i transferred kind of the the sectional structure from original themed journal like following the experience I had previously. But then at some point I decided, hmm, with, with what I'm doing now, it would make sense to adjust that a little bit. And I adjust it. And this is what I'm doing now. I put a couple more pages forward where I put the questions I want, want to answer, but not more than that. And then I kind of, from time to time, reconsider uh, what how I structured journaling for, for a theme, which I thought was an interesting idea. And it it helped me. And one other thing is in theme journal, we don't have empty pages or something. And it might be maybe in the new theme journal, they would have something for a month or uh, something along those lines. But I found that thing also helpful when I changed a theme from uh, set myself a theme for, for a month. I used a separate dedicated page to kind of track how how well I'm go I'm thinking I'm doing in that department, which was also sort of helpful. Yeah, I think I'm with you here. I don't think I will be ordering another theme system journal, 
but I really like their subtle notebooks, which are basically just blank pages, and they could easily go for both themes and free writing. Cool. So that's it, and then we can jump into the into the topic, which I think might be a bit challenging for me to articulate in a way that other people like you would understand and agree. And I'm not certain at all that this is um, kind of a, a real deal or a real problem or real challenge. And we, we probably are going to, to determine through the course of this episode. Just to double check, other people like you is some kind of discrimination or you're discriminating yourself saying that you have difficulties articulating it to anyone else? <laughs> no, no I, I'm, I'm I'm discriminating my, myself. Uh, I'm just conscious of the fact that I might be giving it more importance and significance than it deserves. Well, let's give it a try and see what happens. Right. So let, let, let's try. So the idea or the, the challenge, I think, uh, that might be there, that some of us often or m maybe even always, depending on what, what you're doing, we have projects that are that, that fall into that quadrant of important or kind of relatively important but not urgent and you would want progress on such projects to be to be done but it it's not in the forefront of anyone's mind uh, of those people who are involved in that project and as such it might be difficult uh, for, to get those projects moving forward because be, because they are not highest priority for anyone involved there, there are no traditional project management or project control routines that are in place like daily meetings or more or less regular things the, the work happens mainly in async ways through online async uh, communication and because of that those projects at least in my experience have tendency of moving rather slowly and sometimes not moving at all until you switch them into full priority mode with regular work routines that's did you come across anything like that i think it might be a little bit similar to your co-creation of uh, alan d course but i i think that project of yours probably was higher a little bit of higher priority than things i'm describing or maybe not what, what do you think mm -hmm. What I think here is that you basically describe these projects as important but not urgent, and then you say that they are low priority, which kind of contradicts uh, a bit, because if it is important, even if it's not urgent, it is quite high. Right. I think you're right. Maybe the, the use of word priority was not appropriate here. What I think what, what I meant to say is projects that are deliberately using the smaller much smaller portion of the work day or at least on paper and because of that they can get pushed out when something something comes up on the quote-unquote main project you know i'd say that it's not really time dependent for me mm. because i think an activity could be really short like 15 minutes and it could be still important and stay there from week to week from month to month from day to day no matter what it is and it could be relatively time consuming and large and actually take up a lot of time and still get pushed uh, i can time block and then move those time blocks and over and over plan the calls and move the calls like it doesn't really depend on the volume mm -hmm. i think it more depends on the significance and deadlines and these two factors basically mean like if there is no specific deadline like updating our website mm -hmm. it's a huge thing like you, you can dig very deep into it and if you don't set yourself a deadline you will probably spend forever doing that mm -hmm. so such things they just don't move without uh, a deadline at all and this is what was happening with lindy course before i got partners with people first club and we scheduled a release of the course to October, then I'll, all right, now there are four months and it's time to move on. And it accelerated a lot when 
we saw the release date. Mm. This is interesting. This is very profound observation, I think, because as you were speaking, I was thinking, mm, don't the things I have in mind for these kind of projects have characteristics of more um, kind of process ongoing activities rather than a project which has a specific goal and with that project would projects would often have a specific date by which they're uh, going to be completed and if you don't have this and even if it's important and kind of useful activity that we are doing it might be indeed difficult to get it going but that, that, that's an interesting or interesting thought so it's, yeah. it, it might not be a project that I'm talking about here, but more of a kind of um, activity. Yeah, maybe some yeah. regular practices. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that if we take some things that potentially should happen regularly, mm -hmm. like a retrospective or mm -hmm. something, you could survive without one. It does make your work more effective if it's run properly, but especially right. when you had some negative experience, like I did with some calls on budgeting in Seve. Uh, I wasn't prepared uh, enough, then the call didn't go right, and I kind of struggled with the next call, so I postponed mm -hmm. it once, then twice, then it didn't go right. And uh, it's more of a mo an emotional thing, but if I would like to integrate it, it should make more sense. I should be preparing for it, spending time, and uh, getting it right, if it makes sense. Right, and and maybe we can talk about some some other ways we can get those things th those things right. Right, so that that's great. That th this is the benefit of um, discussing the the definitions of stuff ahead of time, because then we can be a bit more precise and kind of fine tune our understanding and get to the same page. I'm happy that we that we did that. Unfortunately, I was not able to, even though I imagined and I. I think I shared with you that oh I'll I'll find some some materials for us to to hang the discussion on. To my dismay, I was not really able to because maybe because the topic itself is a bit amorphous. Like we spent how however much time discussing what that really is, and I was not able to find anything of any relevance on the internet for this topic. But I witnessed firsthand this phenomenon that is referred to as anxietification of the internet. Uh, I think one of the internet writers and stuff like that. I think it Cory Doctorov, who is a kind of internet journalist, blogger, whatever, kind of coined this term in reference to, to the idea that when now when content is created for the internet for for Google, most of all, it is created for Google such that it ranks, ranks higher uh, at the expense of people being able to read this. And I experienced this like full, uh, at full height trying to search materials for, for this topic. Have you, have you noticed that things like that going on on the internet? Uh, I think I remember this feeling a few years ago, but then I switched to a bit different mode of search. Mm. And uh, if I search for a really weird topic, I would normally either start with some Wikipedia articles and source pages there, or from images. And whenever I can see a nice design of something, mm. it's usually when people put some effort in it. There could be a chart, a graph, or whatever kind of infographics, and this could be a good starting point. So I, I don't start with web text pages. Interesting. Maybe I should try something like this, or maybe uh, I don't know. I I wouldn't suggest trying Chat GPT because some of the articles I read and searching it, they sounded as if they were written by artificial intelligence. Like a, a quick example, I was looking for asynchronous work or sync projects or something along those lines, and an article was "What is asynchronous work? Eight best practices for more efficient teams." Like sounds maybe vaguely slightly relevant one of the those eight best practices was use the right tools and communication channels wow that's that's profound <laughs> i feel enlightened now like but 
and and the, the rest of the text which, which which was rather big was pretty much the same i anyone could have written it just to to make this would this page would be found by google for certain terms which is not great which is not great so speaking of these habits mm -hmm. are those your solo routines or something that engages other people some rituals for the team yeah i think what i have in mind is most, most of all pro projects or activities or things that that involve other people when i feel like when, when you are alone you can get over yourself and kind of get things done more or less uh, with a bit of planning with a little bit of allocation time here here and there but when it's a little bit bigger and there are other people involved for whom this is not the project that occupies most of their time or most of their mind like something where you agree on paper that oh i'll spend like four hours a week on this and then you can imagine what well, i can imagine and i wonder if you can imagine that people can eat into those four hours with activities that happen in the rest 36 hours well, you know, in my experience, it works very differently because uh, for me, group activities are actually more, they just feel more responsible mm -hmm. and something I should prepare for, something I can't really delay because of the social commitment and things that I have to do solo, like, you know, uh, reviewing financial chart. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I, I should do it in the beginning of every month. Like, first mm -hmm. days of the month should be the financial review. I normally postpone it, like, to the middle of the month. and. It's always there. It's in the calendar. Like, I know there is a slot for it. Here it is. And then, like, something more important happens. But if it's a team meeting on OKRs, mm -hmm. I don't think I will postpone it because, like, all right, I've agreed with people. People have prepared. I have been working to deliver and show something. Like, I, I should come and do something there. Even though both of them are just regular monthly checkups. Interesting. Interesting. I think... Once again, when when you are talking, I start getting getting ideas, and then I think, could it be that? Well, it would be difficult to for you to answer the question. Could it be that I think that X Y Z? <laughs> because how would you, how how would you know? But I think it it might be that one of the things that rubs me the wrong way around these projects is that it feels if if you are leader of a project and, and if you try to drive it towards somewhere things happen only when you are actively kind of pushing like on other projects you can get more out of all right we we, we planned something that there are commitments and xyz and next you come next time oh like stuff got done <laughs> on this project maybe i feel that when you come next time you don't always or if ever get this feeling of stuff that got done and you feel like you constantly need to do something to push to, uh, ping people do this and that to 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 get things moving along and maybe this is the the thing that bothers me I'm not sure what, what, what what's your experience there i i think i get frustrated when people don't buy it at first Mm -hmm. first few tries are crucial and if people are not engaged it's kind of demotivating if you see that like, mm, i guess i'm the only one who actually needs that and especially when you see it's important like we were researching uh, online tools and zoom in 2017 mm -hmm. and i was the only one who knew that like guys we should invest in this like remote is growing and things are might change we should really discover that and I was pretty much the only one who thought so. And, but I pushed it long enough so we could have a review of the different tools, seeing the functionality, some checklists. We tested out WebEx, Zoom, and other uh, Google Meets and other platforms before uh, COVID. So when COVID actually happened, we already had all the tools checked and all the checklists ready. And we just had to polish them, uh, see what's new, and get the ball rolling. But I can remember how frustrating it was that nobody saw what I saw. Mm -hmm. 
but I think I think we need to pause here for 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 a moment and appreciate the level of foresight that you have had in 2017 to push your company to research the tools um, geared towards remote work. So that kudos to you there, and and maybe we can pick a little bit into into that that project because one other idea that I got after listening to you is that on on that one did you did you did you have a deadline for 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 the research and could it be that maybe you or we as when we kick off some some of those projects we might have a deadline in mind kind of in our mind like we say oh like it it would be possible to do that in like one two three what however many months or weeks or whatever whatever it is but we do not really communicate this idea with people and get buy in for the deadline just because this is a back burner project and then we get frustrated when things are not moving along towards our internal vision of deadline mm. I think I'm not really frustrated when people don't engage intensively because then I just know that maybe I haven't explained things. Mm -hmm. As an example, I've set up managerial meetings from different teams. Like they don't actually work together. They didn't work at the time. But I wanted them to exchange some context and share what was going on to talk about practices basically making like a community rather than a managerial meeting, mm -hmm. exchange of news. And there was huge resistance. Like we have stuff to do, like we mm -hmm. don't really want to do that. And there was this one person who enjoyed that, uh, a few people who had to do it because I asked, and then a few people who were actually quite skeptical. And at certain moments, I said like, all right, let, let's just give up. Like I, I, I don't see it working. It's not very useful. I give up. Then I tried to reset. Uh, mm -hmm. We were collecting the agenda points and made it more organized. Didn't fly. Like, it wasn't working anyway. And I, then when I said for the second time, all right, like, I, we cancel these meetings. I can't really manage them. Mm -hmm. And then the team said, well, actually, that was kind of useful. And uh, they initiated the next meetings to exchange the context. I'm not the owner of this process anymore. So I just come as a visitor uh, or as a guest to these meetings and the team is uh, managing the meetings and setting the deadlines and choosing when to meet next time, which is the agenda by themselves. This is, this is interesting. This is interesting. I, I, I first started thinking as, as you were describing about this um, meetings and, and stuff like that and work with rigid structures and more flexible kind of free form activity and and it sounded like you described that you tried both like with agendas it didn't fly without agendas it didn't fly either or not not as much because people were not contributing were, were not engaged enough uh, which, which was interesting in in and of itself for structuring this kind of a similar kind of activities but then the latter part where you said that when you cancelled sort of it there was someone who stepped up and said like oh no we, we think there is value in this let's let me i i would imagine there was some one person who said like let let me maybe organize or take care of that was it was this you'd, the you'd case? be surprised but pretty much everyone except me <laughs> like, I, right. I was oh, against the meetings saying like guys we shouldn't do that like we've tried this we've tried that and uh, as they were brainstorming different formats, I said, oh, no, but we've tried that. Like, it didn't work. Like, mm, it didn't work. Let's try something else. Like, all right, I'll try whatever you want. <laughs> this is, this is, because I, I was kind of driving at the idea that if you, as a leader, maybe kind of start and accept that you would need to push this stuff and expand energy to get stuff going with, uh, with the passage of time, there if this thing is useful there would be someone who would kind of pick it pick it up and step up to 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 drive it further or better or something along those lines it looks like in this example it was not the case yeah to my surprise even people who used to be skeptical were ones who didn't want to let it go interesting isn't isn't this an not not an example or something 
it can be used as an illustration if, if you were doing a presentation about team management, best team management practices. Like how, how was the title? Eight best practices for more efficient teams. Isn't this an example of how you sometimes do that with kids when you trigger them? I don't want to use the word the manipulate. reverse psychology. Yeah, reverse psychology. Don't, don't sleep, don't sleep, don't sleep <laughs> to, to get them asleep as, as fast as, as they can. It's like, you know, no, like we, we are not doing these meetings. No, no, no. It, we, we stop right there. And someone would push back. Just... Well, in my case, it was not intentional. I was actually giving up. Like, I thought, like, mm, doesn't work and doesn't bring value. And when I wrote about it, people said, no, 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 it actually does. Well, that's interesting. That's, um, that's a food for thought in that, uh, in that experience that you shared with us. So thanks, thanks for doing this. And uh, one of the questions I had around this, this whole stuff, when, when you were engaged in those projects or ran projects of, of, of this nature, of, of course, we, we established that the, na the nature of these projects is a bit, a bit vague, but did you use any unconventional tooling or methods other than reverse psychology to get them <laughs> moving along anything or, or anything do that you think you we should describe conventional <laughs> methods before <laughs> well con conventional like um, what what you would expect from a regular project but without much of online let's say component of regular meetings and stuff mm. like that like task tracker or something along those lines. It's hard for me to say because most of the managers in our team use different task trackers. So there is not one thing that is conventional. Like our R&D team prefers Asana and some people have task managers in Notion. Mm. Just like me, in l and uh, community, we just do the text updates in the chat on a monthly basis because there is not so much happening. So I don't really have a single task manager. That's why it's kind of hard for me to say which one is more conventional, which one is less. They're all kind of unconventional. There's no convention. <laughs> all right. Okay. So <laughs> any anything that jumps out for you in that department? Anything that, let's say, let's put it this way. Anything that you would consider unconventional, like something that you would use on this kind of project, which you would not normally use on regular <laughs> conventional <laughs> uh, project? Mm, well, I think that for these kind of things, well, it, it still depends because in my mind, these kind of things is very big. And let's say it's a monthly meeting in L&D community, mm -hmm. fully volunteered, uh, people do whatever they like, no pressure, no deadlines. And uh, our agenda for the meetings could be filled by anyone who wants to contribute. Mm -hmm. So th there's no strict managerial thing. Plus. There is no uh, decision-making by the manager there. If something is accepted by the community, by people, it works. If it's not accepted, it doesn't work. Let's say somebody wants to go for a new crazy initiative. Like, let's get another project running. My personal opinion, like, whoa, 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 guys. We do have, like, five projects that we can't complete now. And we don't have focus and time and we postpone them. And do you think we need the sixth one? But if people feel like that, all right, let them try. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that in business context, like in my uh, actual team, if I say that people are overwhelmed or not actually uh, delivering uh, what they should uh, on the core projects, I wouldn't really let uh, some side projects happen unless they were rational or explained or motivational or something that makes a lot of sense to me but here I'm like yeah, yeah sure if you'd like another six track please go for it <laughs> i like this where you say like more power to people but not too much because <laughs> if people at work get overwhelmed we don't want them to get burned and to uh, miss deadlines on other projects right good stuff and and here one related question of tooling i think one of the tools 
quote unquote tools for moving those projects along as when leader would bug or ping other people to get stuff sort of done even even when they commit to something it may slip through the cracks and would move, move slower so you would need to bug people from from time to time and this is activity that i accept that needs to be done but i'm least favorite of because i kind of don't like doing that do you do you have ideas for how to make this i don't know what's the english term for this but in ukrainian we would say ecologically like in um mm. maybe considerate in a, in a considerate way yeah well i would start with your first uh, attitude towards this process because if you think you're bugging people you probably are <laughs> <laughs> good stuff if i remember some pings and reminders that people give to me mm -hmm. there are, i distinguish them into two categories ones that i find actually helpful right. and ones that are kind of passive aggressive and i can see that uh, from the text and then i feel kind of defensive They could be pretty much from the same person, but on different projects. Mm -hmm. And the key difference is that in the first case, I really feel that the person cares about me and about the project and ready to accept a no or uh, mm -hmm. really commits to help, not just the, like, if there is anything I could do, please let me know. But actually suggests some steps and ideas and gets engaged and asks about my new deadlines or whatever works for me i could think of three to four people who do it very well like i learned from these guys mm -hmm. how to really remind me about my commitments and deadlines mm -hmm. in a very considerate way uh, with respect and with care and with uh, emotional engagement And then there is the second category where I can definitely see that it's like a chat GPT rewritten uh, text. <laughs> When you would ask chat GPT to say like, your deadline was on Friday, where is the result? Please rewrite it in a polite way. And chat GPT like, oh, I'm just here to ask whether everything is going fine. In case there is anything I could do, feel free. These kind of things are annoying. Uh, so I would split those into two categories. Well, this is nice. I have three three thoughts about this. Let 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 let's try to 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 catch them. First, I think would be about the idea that you started with that there can be two kinds of those nudges that we get from people. And I was also thinking about along the same lines that hey, when I get those nudges, I guess most of the time I would feel that they're kind of helpful. And and that may be because people really show care about what, what they are, um, why they are nudging me and the way how they are doing. And I think I think that this is this is important. I, I think maybe I underappreciated this element of, of it because when I said like bugging people, like bugging is the second it falls in the second category of passing passive aggressive where you need thing to be done and you care about the project or the result more than the other than about the other person and if you make it to care about the person it would have better it would yield better results in the end i think that this is a very very important thought that this was the first one and the second one was about the the passive aggressive thing i kind of just connected you know how in aviation and stuff they sometimes use abbreviation pa for public announcement i think i thought like hmm, maybe pa stands for passive aggressive as well and like <laughs> let me do a pa <laughs> you're going to make an announcement that's going to sound so passive aggressive towards people who are going to uh to to hear it this was the second thought and the third thought maybe for the first time in this uh in the history of this podcast i managed to <laughs> express all of those things the way how you described how you enacted the 
chat GPT response, like passive aggressive chat GPT response, I feel like it might give uh, people ideas for startups or something. Like, can you imagine like chat GPT, can you please ping uh, such and such on this project? And then chat, chat GPT, instead of send, sending a text, it would send them voice ma- message or like whatever it is that they can send. And it will be like, hello, I'm here to help for sure. Where is this project or like deliverable that you were supposed to deliver on Friday? Is there anything, anything I can do to help you to to be in line with the timelines of our projects and not miss your commitments and stuff like that? Wouldn't that be nice? Fortunately for us, ChatGPT doesn't do voice messages just yet. And not 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 yet. I think it it but can you do, could... it can do voice com- communication when you pay and ask it. Yeah, I'm sure politely. you can, can can download it and. No, I don't think so. But you can, you can record. You can use something like audio hijack that that we use to record it. All right, yeah, that is fair. I, I mo- m- thought more of meme generation because it, it can generate images, and you could ask to make a meme based mm. on a theme, and then you can turn it into the next level of passive aggressive. You generate a team meme for this and then you say well it's just accidentally over the internet i ran into this meme which i guess is very topical for the situation that we have and you take smash the person with that meme it's you know one of those little hints like leaving a time management book on someone's desk oh oh that's subtle passive aggressive right as spa and kind kind of expensive <laughs> <laughs> but but there can can you just buy a prop for a time management book not not the book not, not the real book like the, the one that they use to fill in the shelves so that to, to make sure that your cabinet or your uh, stuff looks looks nice and you would not expect the person to, to read this book would you it's just put a brick that looks like a book on on their on their desk but I, I guess don't don't follow this idea. Stick to the first one. Like care about the people who work on your project, and this is how things are got will get uh, moving along. I in the end, I think we are running to 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 an end here. I wanted to run by you two ideas for strategies that I'm trying to think of and maybe experiment a little bit with getting those projects like this move uh, move along. And one I call pull versus push strategy and the, the, the idea being that well, the push strategy is straightforward you are there you are a leader what you, do, like you, you push you push you push there 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 you nudge people you kind of devise plans together with people but by and large you expand energy to get project moving along by pushing people pu- pushing people forward and i think the big the big danger big downside of this approach is that as soon as people get used to this style of work and as soon as you stop nudging them and you stop bugging them, you stop investing energy into this, like things would pretty much grind to a halt. That That's my expectation. And I think I saw this, this a number of times. And contrary to this, the pull strategy would be to somehow, like if I want a particular thing to move in a particular direction, to find a way to create a little bit of vacuum ahead of the thing so that it it pulls everything towards that thing. And instead of kind of pushing people forward, you kind of run ahead and do do some some sort of magic to create a kind of a little bit of a pull force that will pull everything forward and hopefully maybe sort of create a little bit of inertia so that things get moving along even if you stop um, investing much energy into making things going does it make any any sense to you or is it too too vague in terms of how i describe it Mm -hmm. i just think that you kind of colored the push thing as negative and pull as positive right now and for me, it's more push and pull mm-hmm. uh, way, because with the same person, depending on kind of activity, 
it could be useful sometimes to push and sometimes to pull, depending mm-hmm. on what is going on. If there is a blocker or something that is not very sexy, like financial reports, like show me people who like financial reports. I know very few. And in this case, no matter how hard you pull, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think it's possible. Unless you create some super incentive or sub- substitution or link it with something else. But like, this thing by itself should probably be pushed in my experience. And if it's something meaningful, connected to goals, related to person's agenda, and in, in this case, of course, giving more space and encouragement mm-hmm. works very well. And both could be applied to the same person during the same meeting at the mm-hmm. same time and work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I guess the way you kind of um, articulated my juxtaposition of this two thing kind of has, has a kernel of truth to this. Because indeed, I would, from a selfish perspective, I would see the push method as a negative because I can like thinking of myself i can only push as much or as many things or as many as many people and want to find i want something that's more scalable therefore i kind of file this pushing thing in the more more negative category but of course i think you are right it's a combination of both and maybe moving a needle a little bit if pool i feel like is a bit more scalable but it's more difficult to achieve and as you pointed out it might not be applicable in all of the situations where we need to move things where we need to move things forward yep that's um that's an interesting interesting thought and th- thanks thanks for that in in your practice do you use any of those approaches any kind of specific mm-hmm. I think it's just different kind of motivators and uh, they both work, uh, even for me. Sometimes when I'm pushed, I'm more effective. Sometimes when I'm pulled, I'm more effective. Mm -hmm. It does depend on the project and the nature of it. Mm, So I think it works pretty much for everyone. And, you know, as they say, you should not give people what you would like to get for yourself, but you should treat people the way they would like to be treated. and. I think that overprotection in this case, like if you think that pooling is more scalable and it gives more authority and freedom and engagement, but then there is, I don't know, a project or initiative that people hate. There is quite long distance between hating it and being thrilled and enthusiastic about something. And in such cases, maybe I would do none of those. (laughs) I would just look for another person or someone else to fill in the role so it's either push or pull or ignore or skip or just find an alternative yeah that's a good 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 thought i have another passive aggressive id here so can we uh, for for retrospect is like regular retrospective for a project then should we have a question like do you hate this project and and let everyone share and <laughs> um, express their feelings towards the project. Add Maybe an not. abbreviation like uh, BPA, bi-weekly and passive aggression. <laughs> like that was a BPA. And it's a uh, three-letter abbreviation. Yeah, it's TLA. TLA. Yeah. But, but I think BPA is already, it, it has some something named BPA in chemistry or biology, I think. But Passive baby clan aggression. Yeah, but when, when did this stop us? And one one other thing, I think one of the ideas how I used uh, this to created the, the pool strategy for projects when I believe that kind of there is a value and benefit in in doing something, and not even though people had the knowledge, the expertise, the, the like the talents to contribute, like massively contribute to the thing, they did not really buy into the idea from the uh, first day, and th- that could be for for different reasons, just because maybe they 
felt already overwhelmed and yeah maybe this is nice but then they don't have time for your nice thing and stuff like that and a strategy that i tried to implement for those cases was to kind of get some intermediate results out to get start getting feedback from the rest of the world and kind of show the demand that oh people are interested in this like if we invest more and do more some good things can come out of that and in some cases that worked in some cases that didn't work and created an opposite effect where everyone else was reluctant and like uh, okay maybe <laughs> you should stop this project altogether but um, more often than not it it worked do you, do you think that idea that, like this has legs have you tried anything similar mm, i think it was kotler a change management model when he said that you should celebrate the first steps very much when you change mm -hmm. something and you should really uh, endorse people who are into it mm -hmm. and highlight like how much you appreciate it publicly as much as you can to show that this is something really cool. And uh, it kind of reminds me the way we were introducing Notion. Mm. Imagine a company that lives in Google Docs, like we, we've been using Google Docs for ages. And right. then I come here with an idea of a knowledge base. Nobody's happy with it. People don't want extra work, rearrange their knowledge bases and mm -hmm. review their documentation. That's not fun. And everything works for them. So, like, why would they bother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I say, like, well, guys, let's just make a little team spaces for just us as managers to get this, some room. And there's one person who does it first. I'm like, oh, just check it out. It's so comfortable. Like, I've already used it three times and it works very well. Mm -hmm. And then the person's like, well, I actually enjoyed doing that. And then I support some other people and then some other people. And now Notion is our most used tool and go-to place because uh, it took us a year and a half. <laughs> but people <laughs> got in into the process. So I think that even in notes you wrote version 0 0.5, I think 0 0.05 would work. <laughs> or maybe 0 0.005 would also work. Or even just the concept check with people mm -hmm. could work if you just draft something without doing it first. Uh, people get engaged into the discussion and then you can see that, all right, I have these three people who are potentially in. Yeah, I think that that, that might be a situation where a picture, proverbial picture is worth a thousand words. If you show something, those who understand and if they really feel the pain or something around some area, they can see, oh, there is this thing has potential and can can go further well, that's a good good um great idea i i feel a little bit validated <laughs> on, uh, on on this kind of strategy but with all that we ran through all the things i wanted to go through in this topic it was super useful for me thanks for the discussion and thanks for the ideas i hope that might be useful or interesting for our listeners as well and before we close I think one thing that we should mention that next week is going to be the book club episode and we are reading slash listening however you call it book called how big things get done and i think you already listened slash read the book i already started listening to the book and boy oh boy i do i have things to say about about the book i i think it's going to be interesting uh, discussing this thing with you next time. looking forward to that all right and then until that good weeks yeah yeah good ones <laughs>